Japan is preparing to take a decisive step in its long and complicated relationship with nuclear power as Tokyo Electric Power Company moves closer to restarting part of the largest nuclear power station in the world. The decision carries economic, political and emotional weight, not only for the company involved, but for the country as a whole, still living with the memory of the Fukushima disaster more than a decade later. Tokyo Electric Power Company, commonly known as TEPCO, plans to restart the first unit of the Kashiwazaki Karawa nuclear power plant on January 20. Located along Japan's Sea of Japan coastline in Niigata Prefecture, the Kashiwazaki Karawa facility is the biggest nuclear power plant on the planet by capacity. Before it was shut down, the site housed seven reactors capable of producing more than eight gigawatts of electricity, enough to supply millions of households. The upcoming restart is not just another operational milestone. It will be the first time since 2011 11, that TEPCO has restarted a nuclear reactor. That year remains etched into Japan's collective memory when a massive earthquake and tsunami triggered meltdowns at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, also operated by TEPCO. The accident led to widespread evacuations, long-term displacement, environmental contamination and a deep loss of public trust in nuclear energy and the institutions responsible for managing it. For years after Fukushima, Japan shut down nearly all of its nuclear reactors. Safety rules were rewritten, regulatory bodies were strengthened, and public opposition to nuclear power surged. Entire communities became cautious, if not openly resistant, to the idea of restarting reactors anywhere in the country. Against this backdrop, the planned restart at Kashiwazaki Karawa represents a symbolic turning point. TEPCO's president, Tomowaki Kobayakawa, addressed reporters as the plan was announced, emphasizing the significance of the moment and the responsibility the company carries. As the company responsible for the Fukushima Daiichi accident, we will apply the reflections and lessons learned. We will proceed with the restart, the first in 14 years, sticking to safety as the top priority, he said. The statement captures both the burden of TEPCO's past and the message it now seeks to project that safety, not speed, is guiding its return to nuclear power generation. The restart plan received a critical boost after the regional assembly in Niigata Prefecture approved the partial resumption of operations at the plants. Local approval has long been one of the most sensitive hurdles for nuclear restarts in Japan. While national regulators may sign off on technical safety requirements, local governments and residents live closest to the risks and have often demanded extensive assurances before granting consent. The decision by Niigata's assembly followed years of inspections, safety upgrades and negotiations. It reflects a gradual shift in how local leaders are weighing the risks of nuclear power against economic realities and national energy needs. For the community surrounding Kashiwazaki Kariwa, the plant has historically been a major source of jobs, tax revenue and economic activity. Its prolonged shutdown has had lasting financial consequences for the region. At the national level, Japan's energy policy has also evolved. Rising global fuel prices, supply chain disruptions and geopolitical tensions have underscored the country's heavy dependence on imported fossil fuels. Japan imports most of its oil, coal and natural gas, making energy security a persistent concern. Restarting nuclear reactors is increasingly viewed by policymakers as a way to stabilize electricity supplies, reduce costs and cut carbon emissions at a time when climate targets are becoming harder to meet. Japan currently operates only a fraction of the nuclear reactors it had before 2011. While some reactors have returned to service under stricter regulations, many remain offline due to legal challenges, local opposition or unresolved safety concerns. In this context, Kashiwazaki Karawa stands out not only because of its size, but because of its operator. TEPCO's involvement makes the restart especially sensitive given the company's role in the Fukushima accident. The Kashiwazaki Karawa plant itself has faced its own controversies. In recent years, regulators 
has flagged security lapses at the site, including failures in access control and monitoring systems. These issues delayed restart plans and prompted additional oversight. TEPCO was required to implement corrective measures, strengthen internal governance and demonstrate that it could meet the heightened standards expected of nuclear operators in post-Fukushima Japan. According to the current plan, the January restart will be partial, focusing initially on a single reactor unit. This cautious approach reflects both regulatory requirements and TEPCO's desire to proceed gradually. Even after the reactor is restarted, it will take additional weeks before it reaches full commercial operation. During this period, regulators will closely monitor performance, safety systems and operational discipline. For TEPCO, the financial stakes are high. The company continues to bear enormous costs related to the Fukushima cleanup, including compensation for displaced residents and decommissioning work that is expected to take decades. Restarting nuclear reactors offers a potential source of stable, low-cost electricity that could improve the company's long-term financial outlook. Without nuclear generation, TEPCO and other utilities have relied heavily on fossil fuels, increasing expenses and passing higher electricity costs onto consumers. Public opinion, however, remains divided. While some citizens acknowledge the economic and environmental arguments in favour of nuclear power, others remain deeply sceptical. Surveys and local hearings have shown persistent concern about evacuation planning, earthquake risks and the long-term management of radioactive waste. In Yagata, memories of Fukushima are reinforced by the region's own seismic activity, adding another layer of anxiety. The Japanese government has sought to address these concerns by emphasizing transparency and preparedness. Emergency response plans have been revised, evacuation routes reviewed, and disaster coordination between local and national authorities strengthened. Officials argue that today's nuclear plants operate under far stricter standards than those in place before 2011, with multiple layers of redundancy and enhanced protections against natural disasters. At the same time, Japan is looking ahead to a future in which electricity demand is expected to rise. The growth of data centers, advanced manufacturing and electrification across industries is increasing pressure on the power grid. Nuclear energy, supporters argue, provides a reliable base load that renewable sources alone cannot yet guarantee. The planned restart at Kashiwazaki Kariwa is also being closely watched internationally. Other countries grappling with energy transitions are observing how Japan balances safety, public trust and energy security after a major nuclear accident. The outcome may influence broader debates about whether nuclear power can play a role in meeting climate goals without repeating the mistakes of the past. For residents living near the plant, the restart brings mixed emotions. Some welcome the return of economic activity and employment opportunities. Others worry that no amount of preparation can eliminate the risks associated with nuclear energy. TEPCO has pledged ongoing dialogue with local communities, promising regular briefings, facility tours and information sharing to maintain transparency. Looking beyond January, TEPCO has indicated that it may seek to restart additional reactor units at Kashiwazaki Kariwa if the initial phase proceeds smoothly and gains public acceptance. Each step, however, will require fresh approvals and continued regulatory scrutiny. There is no automatic path to full restoration of the plant's original capacity. Japan's broader energy strategy now openly includes nuclear power as part of the mix alongside renewables and efficiency measures. The government has signalled its intention to extend the operating lifespans of existing reactors and invest in next generation technologies while insisting that safety remains non-negotiable. Whether these assurances will be enough to rebuild long-term trust remains an open question. As the January restart date approaches, the moment carries symbolic significance. It reflects how far Japan has come since 2011 and how unresolved the legacy of Fukushima still is. The decision to restart the world's largest nuclear power plant is not simply about turning on a reactor. 
It is about reconciling the demands of modern energy needs with the lessons of a disaster that reshaped national policy and public consciousness. For TEPCO, the restart is a test of credibility. For regulators, it is a test of oversight. For local communities, it is a test of reassurance. And for Japan as a whole, it is a test of whether nuclear power can be reintegrated into society under a promise that safety truly comes first.